Depending on which country you're from, there's a good chance you've never even considered buying a Xiaomi phone. But we've got one right here, the Mi Note 10, and it's different. It's a phone with, for starters, an absolutely ludicrous spec sheet, but also a price tag that hits a little lower than you might have expected. The box itself is pretty standard fare from the company. You've got black cardboard and holographic text, and the first thing you'll see inside is the phone, below which you'll see an insert, which contains a SIM ejector tool and a case, which is pretty similar to the standard TPU cases you see on every phone, just with a darker tint. There's a USB-C cable and a 30 watt fast charger, which is pretty impressive. When you read the spec sheet of this phone, there are three things that stick out. It's got a mammoth battery, a good 20% larger than most mainstream phones, but even more impressive, a Penta camera setup on the back. And probably the craziest part is that one of those cameras has a 108 megapixel resolution. And so, with these record-breaking specifications, do you actually get a record-breaking camera? Short answer, yes. This is ludicrously good, but I'll get to it. I've spent about a week with the Mi Note 10, and before I even started testing the camera, a few things became very clear. It feels good. It's a heavy phone encased in Gorilla Glass 5 and curved in a way that's very reminiscent of the Huawei P30 Pro released earlier this year. Both phones have almost identical button placement, even a similar chamfer at the top. And if this wasn't odd enough, the displays are identically sized 6.47 inch AMOLED panels with even the exact same water drop notch. None of this is a complaint for the Xiaomi. I mean, the Huawei P30 Pro released at a thousand euros. So coming in at 550, it's more of a compliment. Plus, Xiaomi has a headphone jack. It's also a really good display. As far as 1080p panels go, it's probably my favorite display on a Xiaomi phone. One thing that does really stick out as odd to me is that if you look at this camera setup, it protrudes to pretty much halfway down the phone. So far that with my usual grip using either hand, I'd be touching one of the cameras and completely blocking another one. Also, the sheer protrusion of this camera module means significant table wobble. So it's already clear from the spec sheet that this thing is a massive jump, but even generally, whilst I've been using the phone, it feels like a turning point. Familiar if you've ever used a Xiaomi phone, but new at the same time. For example, like other handsets from the company, you've got two main options for unlocking, an in-display fingerprint scanner and face unlock with the front camera. And neither are the fastest I've tried, but they work well enough. There's MIUI as usual, the software skin. Although in this case, we've got their brand new MIUI 11, and I think it's a big improvement. Visually, it's far cleaner. Xiaomi has removed a lot of the noise, extra UI elements that weren't needed, and the result is a really clean, polished experience. I definitely have felt in the past with Xiaomi phones that there's a risk of it looking a little cluttered, but that hasn't actually been the case here. There's a proper dark mode to save even more battery and some really neat features like being able to play a standard video as your wallpaper and improvements to the built-in productivity tools. Plus a nice looking ambient display to let you know the time and battery percentage without doing anything. It also feels new because this is a curved display, something that Xiaomi has generally shied away from, apart from that Mi Mix Alpha phone, but that's something for another video. And of course, the biggest break from past devices is this newfound emphasis on camera. And don't get me wrong, some of Xiaomi's past phones this year, they've had really good camera systems, but from the spec sheet alone of the Mi Note 10, it kind of feels like you're getting a camera with some extra phone on top of that. For starters, there are five cameras. There's a main 108 megapixel wide angle, a two times optical zoom camera, but what's really interesting here is that above this, there's another zoom camera, this time five times. You'll see why in a minute. There's also an ultra wide and finally a dedicated macro camera at the bottom for close-ups. The large main sensor combined with a wide aperture means straight up stunning looking bokeh. Just taking standard photos in the daytime, they look almost consistently cinematic. If you compare to the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, I generally slightly prefer Samsung's warmer colors and dynamic range on the Galaxy is also a little better, but Xiaomi creates so much natural depth of field, the images look a world apart. For example, this. This might look like a portrait mode shot. It's not, standard main camera. And I haven't even got to the detail yet. It's phenomenal, there's no other way to put it. Side by side with, again, the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, Samsung is completely blown out of the water. Even from a distance, Xiaomi can capture the texture of objects. If you ever wanted to print images out in large sizes, or you wanted the comfort of being able to crop into a photo later whilst keeping it sharp, this new phone completely kills it. Although you could say that things like dynamic range are actually more important for most people who will just be using these photos for social media posts where they're gonna be heavily compressed anyways. 
this one's up to you. What I can say though is that the power of this sensor even extends to video quality. It is DSLR-like in a way that I've never seen on a smartphone before. I wouldn't say it's as consistent if you start switching lenses or move over to the front camera as the iPhone 11 Pro is, but it has moments of sheer excellence for which this might just be the number one camera system on a phone right now. Add to this vlog mode, something which I went in assuming would be a gimmick, but actually speeds up the process of making genuinely high quality, short, shareable content, with none of the hassle of editing. So why do they add two zoom cameras? Well, having five times optical zoom is amazing. It's enough zoom to be able to see details that most people's eyes can't. But if there was only a five times zoom, it creates a little bit of an issue. Portrait mode, in my opinion, always looks better when taken on a phone's telephoto camera, but if you've only got a 5x lens, then you'd be zooming in far too much to be able to do this. Also, just generally, when you're zooming in for a photo, if you've just got a 5x lens, you'll find the quality of your shot will slowly deteriorate as you zoom in until you hit 5 times, and then it will jump again as your phone switches lenses. The Mi Note 10 evens this out. It improves on these two things. You get high-grade portrait mode shots, even if they are a bit beautified, and a much more uniform quality throughout the zoom range. You can go all the way to 50 times zoom, but because the actual resolution of this telephoto camera isn't that high, I wouldn't recommend going past 10 times. Also, if you factor in the full array of cameras on this phone, you've got quite possibly the most flexible system ever. You can capture everything from sweeping landscapes with the ultrawide, to distant objects with the telephoto, to ones that are literally right in front of you using the macro. And even this is pretty good. I wasn't expecting much. I've seen a lot of low-grade macro cameras on phones before, but the Mi Note 10s does its job. And finally, even at night, incredible. It doesn't brighten an image as much as, say, Huawei's flagship, but in a way, this makes it more natural, and the detail captured is actually greater. Plus, it's not just that you can take great photos, but also that you can do this for a long period of time. This sizable battery, combined with 30 watt fast charging, reminds me of how I felt about the Huawei Mate 30 Pro, all but forgetting that battery was ever an issue on phones. So far then, the Mi Note 10 seems like a bit of a home run, and it kind of is, but there are some caveats. This last year, we've seen a whole breed of cut price smartphones that try to do everything. The absolute best specifications, pretty much all the primary features, but the Mi Note 10 isn't really one of those phones. Xiaomi have built something that's a little more specialized, but the downside of that is that there are some gaps. For example, audio-wise, it's a single bottom-firing speaker. Good quality considering, but still not close to the experience of a dual speaker. The vibration motor and the haptics are noticeably average, and even the performance is not the best you can get for the money. It's powered by 6 gigs of RAM and the Snapdragon 730G chip. And to put it simply, if you put that side by side with the current flagship 855 Plus chip, it's just over half as powerful. That's not amazing for 550 euros, and it's the biggest weakness of the phone. It's not slow, but it does hang every now and again, and there's a significant processing time after taking photos, not to mention the phone has to reload when you zoom into them, although this in part will be because of just how high the resolution is. You can play games, and in fact that's exactly what the chip is geared towards, but still it's an upper mid-range chip and it performs like an upper mid-range chip. You'll get smooth frame rates on most top games right now, but you'll just have to dial down a few settings. It also got pretty hot in my testing. The final emissions are pretty standard for a phone at this price. You've got no official IP rating, you've got no wireless charging, and no microSD card slot, but with 128 gigs, it's just about enough that I think most people won't need one. So, to bring this all together, it's pretty rare to see a phone at this price actually being the best at anything, but I can genuinely say that this camera, in some scenarios, is the kingpin. Not even close to the top, literally at the top of the entire smartphone pyramid. The phone is also chunky, but I'd take that any day for endurance like this. It's just not the most well-rounded phone, with noticeable sacrifices in performance and audio. But for a user who's a little bit less about the media consumption and a little bit more about the camera, I can wholeheartedly recommend the Mi Note 10. In fact, you might already know that for the last six months, I've been looking for a phone to switch to from my Galaxy S10 5G, and the Mi Note 10 is maybe the closest I've come. The only thing stopping me was the mid-range chipset. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.